Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you what I consider to be one of the more underutilized masks in Lightroom. This is a newer mask that was added to Lightroom Classic version 12 and Lightroom version 6. I'm talking about the object mask. Along the way, I'm going to teach you something that is considered cliche in photography if you aspire to be a professional photographer and you have something in your portfolio reflecting this cliche thing I'm going to be teaching you, you'll probably get laughed out of the building. But I don't care. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to be teaching you how to do selective color. Specifically, I have this image of the Kodak building in Rochester, New York. What I want to do is I want to use the object selection to tool to select all the letters in the word Kodak. Because when I'm finished, I'm going to have the entire image black and white except those letters. I want those letters to be in color. So to do that, we're going to go up to masking. And the object selection is right here, objects. We'll click on that. There's two different ways you could select objects. The first way, or the second way maybe, if you want to look at the way it's set up here, is you could draw a rectangle or a square over the object. So if I wanted to select the K, I could just draw like this rectangle over it and then Lightroom will do some thinking and then it will select the K. But you can see it didn't really do that great of a job selecting the K, kind of over selected a little bit. So I'm going to undo that, hit Command Z on my Mac, Control Z on a PC. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to objects and instead of using that, we're going to use this other method where I just draw with a brush over the object. Now when you do this, you don't have to perfectly draw and paint over the object. You just have to roughly paint over the object. You could go over it a little bit and select some of the things around it, and you could not select some of it. And Lightroom will do still a pretty good job of finding that object and se selecting it and not selecting everything else around it. So you have a brush. You just affect the size of the brush with that slider. You could use the bracket keys too. Right bracket key makes it larger. Left bracket key smaller. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint on the K. And as I mentioned, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to outline it a little bit. So I'm going to paint that K. Come off. It takes a second to think. It did a better job selecting it there. Let's select the O. But you can see I don't have a brush anymore. We have to add to this. So click on add. And we're going to add another object. So we're adding this O. So again, we'll just roughly paint around the O. Like so. And let it select. And it overselected there. It selected the middle of the O, but we'll fix that in a second. So we're going to add again, and we're going to add another object. So we're going to add the D. And go like that. And let it think. It overselected there as well, but again, we'll fix that. Don't worry about it. We're going to add to this again, and we're going to add another object. We're going to add the A this time. One's a little more drawing here. All right, let's see how that does. I didn't paint that one very well. It did a pretty good job there. All right, now we're going to add one more, the K. So we're selecting or adding the object. And let's go down here and we're going to get the second K in Kodak. Oops, I did really poorly there. I might have to redo this one. We'll see. And no, that did a pretty good job. All right, so it did the K, the A, and the other K pretty well, but it didn't do so well around the O in this letter D. So what we're going to do is we need to subtract from the selection. So click on subtract and we're going to subtract with a brush and just make sure that feathering, feathering could be anywhere you like, you know, you think you need it. I'll have it around 72. Flow is at 100, density at 100. We're going to get a little bigger brush. We'll get the right bracket key to come in there and it might be too big. So we kind of have this really small one or we have this really large one, but we'll just do it very quickly for the video and we'll paint it away inside of that and we'll paint it away over here as well. So, oops, I went, I over went too far. Let's undo that. I'll just hit command Z on my Mac again to undo that. It takes a second. There we go. All right, let's try to do a better job. It's hard to talk and draw with a mouse. My tablet is actually right next to me. I should use that, but I'm being lazy. All right, that's good enough. All right, so we have the K, the O, the D, 
the A and the second K all selected. Now, what I need to do here is invert this. So what we're going to do is right where it says mask one, click on these three dots and we're going to invert mask one. And when we do that, eventually we have everything but the KODAK selected. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to color and we're going to go to saturation and we're going to take saturation all the way down. There's my selective color, but it still doesn't look that great. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it better. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to where it says mask one and we're going to click on the three dots and we're going to duplicate and invert the mask because the mask now, because I inverted it once, the mask is on everything but the letters. So I want to select the letters. So we're going to duplicate and invert the mask. And this second mask now has the letters selected. And now for this, we'll go and we'll make it more saturated. And we'll go to presence and we'll add some texture. We'll add some clarity. Now we're making it stand out a little more. Let's go to tone, make it just maybe a touch darker. Or do we want to make it brighter? I don't know. I think we'll just go to color and we'll just ridiculously add saturation. All right. Now I'm just going to finish the image. I'm going to go and create a new mask and I'm going to select the sky. And with the sky, I'm going to go to presence and I'm going to add clarity and like crazy amount of clarity. And we'll add this, make it look really stormy. All right. There's our finished image. Uh, the trope, as some people call it, but I don't think that's a correct name. I prefer to call it cliche. Uh, the cliche of selective color done to this image. Um, the actual, um, the actual letters in Kodak. I think I have too much saturation. Back that off a touch. Yeah, that looks all right. All right, so. I use the object mask, and as I mentioned, there's two different ways to do it. You could use the square or rectangle draw method, just draw a rectangle or square over the object, or you could just paint like I did with the brush. If it over selects, subtract from the selection. Usually you'd use a brush to do that, as I did between the O and this D here. Um, sometimes it might not select the entire object. In that case, add to it, and most often you'd add to it with a brush and you could add to the um, selection that way. And that's how you do it. So that's um, how to use the object mask in Lightroom Classic version 12, 12.1, I think is the current version. And Lightroom 6.1 is the current version. Um, and how to do selective color. Just don't put it in your portfolio. If you're going for a portfolio review somewhere, they'll probably not appreciate it because they're snobs but it is a lot of fun to do. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.